Hello yep. everybody, welcome to another NAF ladder game up against Jomny, a rematch with his uh, Old World Alliance and uh, yeah, we're talking about all sorts of things but mostly about the new Euro Bowl um, you know, beta rules, very nice of them to share it with people and stuff so everyone can talk about it and hypothesise we've got Purple Chest, Elliot and Dimmy G on the booth Hello guys Hello We're playing another one? Yeah Wow I know, I'm crazy. Is, is I need practice. 10,000 hours to be an expert or something. I need practice. Have you not seen how rubbish I am with elves? <laughs> he's doing a 24-hour stream because he's, he's got to keep playing until he wins a game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's 48 sure hours is going to be enough. I'm quite interested in this build. I have to switch build. to Battle Brothers. <laughs> Quite interested in this build, Jim. What's the um? What's the piece in the middle of the back line? Is that a runner it's or a, a runner. blitzer? It's a runner. It's a runner. So it's a dodge runner, three dodge blitzers, uh, a wrestle and a... a block which obviously six naked line elves i uh, know five naked line elves um i believe that will build two three re-rolls and an apo yeah 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 it's a very sexy build isn't it yeah. the only difference between my standard build here is that i would often have a leader runner instead for that fourth uh, lovely re-roll to really get aggressive in their faces mm. and matching that would be a second wrestle which for the same reason the uh, great thing I... about this build PC is he doesn't need an extra 10k for it either. Yeah, you didn't. You don't for mine, Dimmy. And I did go. <laughs> 20, I did go I for like 32 games unbeaten on NAF with it across a year and a half. Dimmy is hilarious. <laughs> Dimmy will never not be hilarious. Oh, oh there's a lot of good. No, no I don't give in oh. until I'm And some people do like that block, which I, I will defend. Like a wrestle, I will which, defend. Um, I will hit with my blitzers. Fifty-five whole months. Frenzy pieces. Unless I'm trying to surf. Um, and if my wrestle witch goes, I often look at my block witch and go, oh, God, I wish I had wrestle. Mm. I, so I it just means I can be aggressive with one. Mm. Right. Uh, I mean, so as I said, you know, your mileage may vary. I'm just. I'm just telling you my rationalisation. And interestingly, oh, yeah. Jay Leave coaches exactly the same roster I do. Um, Pete W makes the point that he agrees with you that the runner's better with dodge than with um, leader. On the grounds that you always use that leader to bloomin' dodge him anyway. Yes. Uh, and it gives you another move seven dodge piece that you can start turns with, you know, moving reasonably effectively. Which I, I, I like. I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Pete lately has been trading the runner out for an assassin uh, and bringing in the fourth blitzer without any skill on it. Yeah, that's the Seabros build. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it drops you to two rerolls, which I, I don't love. No, I don't. To me, it's it's a very it's good for draws. It's very defensive. Oh, fuck me. You can have four blodge blitzers and two dodging witches. Um, anyway, in, in amongst all that, thank you very much, Night Demon. Absolutely glorious, staying fantastic for 55 whole months. That is a lot of beaver pregnancies. Nearly Brilliant. 14 beaver pregnancies. Incredible. And uh, funnily enough, Night Demon, there might be, in a couple of weeks, a cheeky, uh, a cheeky episode of JFW. I'm going to try and do one every, one every month. That's what I'm going to try to do. Um, which... We'll see. But fingers crossed. <clears throat> Got ideas. Halloween Havoc, isn't it? In, uh... What is the Pete roster? He's gone. He went double assassin for Euro Bowl. Yeah, four oh. bludge blitzers, two a wrestle and a block witch, uh, two assassins and three. Line elves. So he had naked assassins. Yeah, he says yeah. he's. I think he. I think he actually swapped dodge onto one of them and off one of the blitzers. That's an incredibly to cage breaking. He is very squishy. I think he slightly says he slightly prefers one assassin, uh, particularly yeah, now underworld have been nerfed, because also it means that if one of your line elves gets knocked off, you're struggling for what the hell you put on the line of scrimmage. But if you've got four line elves, then there's a reasonable chance you might as well have three for the elements. Was he um, receiving like every time he won the toss? You know? oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Three blodge blitzers, one naked, one dodge assassin. Says talk. Yeah, that, that's the sea rolls uh, build. Yeah, I, I'm. St I still don't love assassins. 
He won Super Probably. League. He won Super League. And, and honestly, I had a game with the Seabros build, and the Assassin was incredible. Like, he shadowed twice in, in like, very impa- two very impactful shadows, and he cast with Stab. So, you know, my testing concludes with a sample size of one, that it's definitely the best <laughs> build. This well, is man. why the testing things isn't so fucking clever, is it? But, you know. Well, I mean, that's as we all know from the Euro Bowl Discord, that, you know, testing things once is obviously more valid than, say, you know, 25, 30 years of playing Blood Bowl and 10,000 games played. Exactly. I, I don't understand what knowledge and experience can possibly add to a small sample size of actual real games. <laughs> yeah. The French build. Oh my god. I mean, it could be more than one person's build count at the end of the day. Absolutely. That's, that's what I put it as the C. It, I call it the Seabros build because he won Super League with it and. Yeah, like I said, Jay Leave is the best thing you can do in Blood Bowl. <laughs> Jay Leave plays the purple chess bill because I came up with it before him. And also, you know, I've got a bigger voice, so. <laughs> the Assassin's actually incredible against Bull. Yeah, the, I mean, the situ- situation it's an incredible piece. It was just used to chunk through Snotlings like you wouldn't believe. So it was great, the dominance of Underworld. Which is one of the things that really brought it to the fore. Do I uphill for a push? So I can then 2D into 2D and then get the ball out. I think I'm going to. It looks stupid, but I'm going to. I know what you mean, Tolkemada, except I don't because I think it's so crap that I completely ignore it. And almost always that turns out to be the right <laughs> answer. Nice 2D, too. Yeah, it was pretty good, yeah. wasn't it? It's like the bomber, it's effective on how you're playing I hate bombers, oh my god, I hate them. He's talking about it having a psychological impact as well as a game impact. Yeah. And it fundamentally changes how they approach each turn. Yeah. I had to play against Tree with uh, Cindy, and I had to score on turn 7, Cindy. Well, Cindy and Bomber are bloody everywhere in Blood Bowl 3 at the moment, of oh, course they are. No, this was on tabletop, this was in focus. <sighs> How did the um, what's it called the ogre oh, ogre, ogre, ogre tuck thing? Go. Joe won it. Joseph won it, which is uh, Green Skin Phil's eldest boyfriend. <laughs> 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 and uh, Green Skin Phil came second. Cool. And uh, it, it was good. I took my knobs. My knobs. More, more importantly, was it fun? Because someone uh, was it's nice that Phil did or nearly did. Yeah. So I played. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I like on day one. I played against stars. So, uh, I, well, I played against Cindy, uh, which was interesting. I didn't love it, but got the job done. And then I played against Helmet, like the chainsaw or whatever. Oh yeah. And then that that was fine to be honest. And then game three, I played against Ripper Underworld. That was very fun. That was um, that was the most fun playing against Ripper Underworld, wasn't it? It, it was after Ripper failed a GFI and killed himself <laughs> and didn't pull Jen. <laughs> and then I screamed in his face. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, Classy. Yeah, I, mate, I was so happy Ripper died. I was like, yeah, fuck you. He, he was just doing this typical Underworld thing, just not playing Blood Bowl at all, knocking yeah. the guy down, fouling it. He had a DP. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I was just like, this is... To be fair, Dim, horrible as it is, that is probably now the only way to play Underworld. It's the optimal without way, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just not my kind of problem. Anytime you engage, you're just going to get blown off the pitch. So, you need to not do that. Yeah. Um, what tools you got left? You've got deep bench and you've got gutter. So, you're looking at one turning and fouling. Yeah, which is pretty much what we did. Yeah. Um, but we got a draw in the end. And... uh yeah, like it was fun. Like the knob, like knobs were just incredibly underpowered in that rule set anyway, because everyone has to take a strength five piece. Yeah. I've got all these guard, and I've got a beautiful shape, and then they just steam in with a strength five mighty blow piece and kill my guard. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, mate, so many bodies. It is the knobs problem. Not only are they overpriced, but of course they're lovely and very effective until they start to lose even one or two pieces, and yeah. it's just not enough to do what they need to do. I pretty just much hold the a, entire field up at once. Yeah, and I had a dead bodyguard on turn two in like 
yeah, four of you, the games. That's and probably then, a bad thing. Well, I drew all four of the games that a bodyguard died on turn that's two. That's pretty good. Well, yeah, yeah, but I won the other games that they didn't die on turn <laughs> two. So I was just like, if they just hadn't died straight away. Then I'm so like, you were unbeaten on the weekend? I was. I was no, two, Debbie, four, that's pretty good, mate. Two, four, zero. And I, I should have been slightly better than that, but I, I fucked up on turn. I don't know if he's used dodge or not. <laughs> no, it really ought to tell you. <laughs> I've got no um, idea if I'm going to attempt to surf him or if I'm just not going to surf him because he hasn't used dodge. No. Nope. You'll only know after you visually see it. So how do you know? Dumb. Yeah, how, how do you, do you know? know he has no feedback whatsoever. Would it say such and such uses dodge perhaps if he had? Um, maybe. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. There is some feedback. There's some kind of like audible difference or hey, visuals. Sir, There's something, anyway. but it's incredibly difficult to tell. Um. Great explanation, Elliot. It's really clear. Cheers, mate. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, my explanation was that it's extremely unclear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you did your explanation in an incredibly clear way. I mean, I was just playing to, you know, the subject matter. <clears throat> oh, here he is. Jingo Berry Chap. Hello, mate. Oh, Why have you got a name? different name on Switch than what you I have? Just... Yeah. Me and you are going to fall out, Jingo. <laughs> 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 Hello. Never trust yeah, the man. Yeah, definitely be called Jingo Berry Chap in game. Yeah. Good name, Jingo Berry Chap. Right. <laughs> mm. It's one of the halflings, wasn't it? On the second day. Oh, was it? Was it? Mm. Yeah. In second edition, what was he? A star player or something? Just a named player from uh, the probably the Grasshoppers, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I love you too. Oh, I love you too, Jingo. Or Jamini. I don't know what to call you anymore. He's like the Shaggy of the Jimmy Fantastic gang, isn't he? Jimmy. <laughs> or possibly more like the Scooby. Or the dog. <laughs> no, the lovable, big-hearted one that everyone loves. I thought the dog Who, was crazy, Yes, is a dog. Yeah. <laughs> grasshuggers. Ooh. Yeah, the Greenfield Grasshuggers were the... Uh, Greenfield Grasshuggers. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool name for a team. We used to have a rule book that dropped le just names and lore all the way through it. It dripped with sort of content and fun <laughs> and silliness. Yeah, yeah, Mary As Chapman. well as kind of m maybe explaining some of the rules badly and unclearly. I've um, decided that I'm going to name all my races teams and have a team name that I stick to for all competitions. The Marigold Maulers. Well, that's my knob team, yeah. Mm. The Marigold Maulers. I love that team name. I think that's well, great. I mean, I just, through laziness, I often call my dwarves Purple Delvers, which just ended up a team I used for ages on Fumble. So have you seen, have you seen um, the Minis Hammers painted me, PC? Yeah, yeah, I saw the screenshots of them. I'd love to see them in person. You should see the yeah. vampires that he's painted for I me. I saw the vampires at... Um... Oh, did you uh, see Brighton. the? Did you see the? Well, the, I've got the Varg now. I haven't as well. seen the Varg. Well, oh, he's, he he's is posted super me sexy. pictures on my Discord of your Varg. So I want to. I might go to the next October of Cup just so I've got an excuse to use it. Yeah, hopefully vampires are nerfed by then. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes I'll go just for the fun of using a race. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be. Other times, you know, I'll pair up with a, an elite team and go to a tournament specifically to win it. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds exciting. So are you talking to me or Jimmy with that one? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to leave that ambiguous. <laughs> Both of you have reason to think I might be discussing yourself. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Ken. I'm definitely looking Any forward to Ken. I mean, sometimes it is nice to go and try and be competitive. I usually do if I'm going to the NAFC, try and be competitive. Which means building to win six games. No draws yeah. To to use that. You weren't at NAFC this year, were you? No, I was working. Actually, and I'm not going to yeah. be next year. I don't have a ticket. You don't. That may be solvable, but at the moment I don't have a ticket. No, I was at a concert of my son's that evening. 
I'm like 40th on the reserve list or something. I'm not getting a ticket. Well, times. to be fair, last year there was like 40 on the reserve list. I wasn't even on the reserve list. And I think yeah. they went they went through like 70 people. And then I still got a ticket like two weeks Yeah, before. I'm still keeping that date in my mind as a possible yeah, date. For I, I think, it, I think uh, you will get a spot. Judging by this year. It's not impossible, is it? Let's see what happens. But, um... So yeah, it's kind of team events where I don't mind being competitive, but there'll be other ones where I just want to, you know, races I haven't coached. I haven't done goblins on tabletop for way too long. Do you know what my next two races are? I don't know, you're doing all the rubbish ones like Skaven, so I've got to presume you've got... Rubbish you must, you've got to do so woodies my, my next, I'm going maybe. to back... Are you going to backbreaker, are you, PC? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm taking Renegades to backbreaker. Okay, that'd and be fun. And then I'm taking Pro Elves to Dark Fireball. What's that then? And that's uh, St. Albans. You know Chicken? Oh yeah, no I can't do that day. That's um, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. I'm Such to... a shame. I'd love to. I mean St. Albans is, you know, it's 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah it's, and and it's My brother really lives there. Place, and, you know, really I, I love Chicken. Because he's using but... my rule set, which I stole off Thulia. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I thought Thulia was pretty good. Yeah, I think Foodian's really good at rules. But I was quite impressed with no numbers. It was better than I thought, actually. It was a fun day. Lots of interesting builds. I'll probably go at some point, but it's just not... Like, every it's time a nice venue. Play... Like every Brighton, you know, nice I'm big open gaming shop. Like, because he's doing one in December, but I'm in Bexley in December, so I can't go. And the one Yeah, before... I'm on the reserve list for that, but it seems unlikely. Yeah, Bexley, I don't know. It's a really small one, Bexley. I think there's only like 20 people. It's a shame it's literally right around the corner from um, my wife's best mate. Oh, is it? So she could obviously spend the day there. That would be handy. But if it's not to be, it's not to be. Yeah, it's only put on. Well, there's plenty of time yet, anyway. It's another month yet. Dingo Perichap, hello, first of all. Hello, I guess you're Jomini, right? With the saying I didn't use Dodge. So yes, hello and uh, welcome to the stream. Right, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to follow Jingo Berry so you you can see when Jim goes live and uh, you can laugh at him losing constantly with Dark Elves. Yep. Uh -huh. But one of the reasons I'm passionate about this rule set is, as we've said, is it tends to spread to lots of the other tournaments in the year. Or at least it's a basis from which people vary. And, um... And... Uh, I'm considering now do I even really want to go to Budapest because it's I mean I really want to go to Budapest the place yeah but you know the idea of tying that up with some fun blood bowl sounded great but uh, it just is a bit underwhelming isn't it? well I definitely want to go abroad anyway so I was thinking about well, there are other options well I was thinking about Ireland in January yeah I'd love to do a, a tournament in Ireland and we have friends in Ireland, so I might have to look at their calendar. Yeah. See well, when there might be one that would Bleed dovetail Bleed in one. January, and there's another one in April. Right here. They're the two big ones. But then April's a bit weird, because we've got Kent and we... In there. Yeah. <laughs> so Kent and the UK TC I shall build around, and then I need to decide if I want to go to Hungary. I mean, the thing is, the wife really wants to go as well, because she likes the idea of Budapest, so I'll probably end up going, even if it's a shit rule so. <laughs> mm. It's still Blood Bowl at the end of the day. Actually. Yeah, I still had fun in Athens despite being on a team that was, you know, not competitive and not expected to be. It was still some fun Blood Bowl and a good trip. And me and Jen had a great time together seeing Athens. It was a really nice couple's time as well as some good Blood Bowl. So. Yeah, Lots I know of good boring. came out of that. Okay. Why wouldn't you push the Orc off? Have you got a link, Benny? Oh, is there one, not one in that square? I see. Yeah, there's not one in there. No. Ah. I'm debating whether to follow and punch another one or just run away with everything. Like, punching yeah. things is good, isn't it? No. Punching things is good. It's no, really Jim, it isn't. No. no, it isn't. Not here, it's not. No, it's not. It is really good. Punching things is really good. It's good. It's, it's not, though. It's really good. It's like the best thing you can do in Blood Bowl. Well. It's good. Yeah, but it isn't. It's so Not good. as Dark Elves. As Dark Elves, you control the field. 
You knock things over, but you don't need uh, to remove them. So you can punch this one instead anyway. Let's see. It's nice if you do. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, everyone loves a removal. That's lovely. And I certainly don't under hit, but I much, I massively prioritise movement as elves. Plus, whilst you only need them alive for 16 turns, you do need them alive for 16 turns. And hanging around where there's big dangerous things, I tend not to try and do. Two and a one. Quite like the two and a one. Why are these all dated 2018? Punching things is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> right, good. Yeah, that's a lovely link to some lovely, lovely art, but from six years ago, so. Yeah, this is 2018, <laughs> what the hell? Mate, honestly, I think Hammers could win a Golden Beam. I mean, my eyes aren't good enough to tell you if it's a yes to that, Dimmy. The stuff I've got from Espaba and Hamez are the two best painted teams I have. They are absolutely stunning. Yeah. But I've seen the sort of teams that, and, and Espaba does the you know the NAF lottery team. He's he's top tier. There's a but the sort of teams that go into Golden Demon are just absurd in their level of detail and I mean hours and days people have put into them mm. that's the thing like what is what is the top limit of hammers we don't Maybe. know do we because he's just getting them done so yeah. yeah so we just play the ones he's knocking out having some fun painting if he, i mean if he really really put in a you know this is my display team thing god mm. knows what it could be oh my god that minotaur wow you got bronze Pull the one Of course, Morg win. Is that that's not Morg? That's Zug, isn't it? I think that's Zug. Yeah, it's Zug. <laughs> you love the werewolf. That was my least favourite of the three. <laughs> I quite like the werewolf one. Yeah, it's very dynamic, isn't it? It's like it's like a bit of a scene. Where's where where's that? This is the uh, silver one, Jim. It's the second one. You press the arrow. I prefer the Minotaur. The Minotaur is my favourite. Which one? I just like the inventive. Uh, the bronze of the... one. I've clicked oh. the wrong one here. Yeah, it's the second. It's the second link because he oh, posted right, yeah, like. Ah, uh, I'm still on link one. Oh yeah, yeah the uh, the werewolf. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that, I mean, look at the flesh tones. You see, that's the sort of thing they look for, isn't it? Is that varied tone of the flesh across the scalp, showing lighting from a certain direction and all that sort of stuff with the shadowing. Ridiculously good. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah. I know, you, I mean, the werewolves, the, the monitor is very eye catching, but it is a tiny bit. Tiny bit cartoonish, maybe. Yeah, it's too clean, isn't it? It needs to be like more blood smatterings and shit. You should see the Minotaur S Pubba did for me. It is so sexy. Who's S Pubba? He's um, like I said, he does Spubba. the uh, Spubba. <laughs> Spubba. He does the S P U, and then there's four or five Bs, and then an A. Yeah. He lives in York. Uh -huh. He's an incredible painter. He does the raffle team for the NAFC each year, which is usually one-off pieces he sculpts and paints to either, you know, to be the stars as well as the team of whichever one he's decided will be in the raffle. Um, he's an incredible painter. He's the only thing I've got that's at the Hammers level, or possibly I would say slightly above, but... My eyes aren't really good enough to tell them apart at that level. 
Yeah, I've seen I, I've seen a lot of sculpted stuff on that, and I, yeah, it's really good, really, really good. Like the sculpting is crazy. Yeah. So I've got a set of bull warriors on which he you know, did some little minor tweaks and changes to make them very individual for me. So the hats are not big hats; they are you know, football-style helmets. And you know, we turned one of the hobgoblins into a little assassin. So I've already got an assassin. Of course, I have to designate two of my Chaos Dwarf blockers as fire breathers now, wouldn't I? <laughs> yep. Put a red ring on their base or something. Are you going to play chores? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was why I chuckled. I'm like, will you really? <laughs> In case anyone wants to borrow them. Um, <laughs> All right. I, oh, they're so hard to love, aren't they? Yeah. And I love chores. I have loved chores with a passion. It's only this rule set that I've stopped being a chorf major because they got a bit herpy derpy. And iron hard skin, mate. Iron hard skin. And I was hoping they'd change in a way that made them interesting again, but they did the opposite, didn't they? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Like they could have just left tackle on them and just took the tackle. Yes. Away. In case you hadn't realised that. Uh, I'm going to go for it. Campbell Nuorni. Um, I don't paint. I either get good friends to paint for me or I buy on eBay. So I would require someone to repaint my beautifully painted Chaos Dwarves uh, yeah, in order to turn two of them into flame breathers. And in order to do that, I would contact S. Pover and see if he'd be interested in me sending two back for him to do something with. Oh, did he I paint think that would be the only way. He did the chores for me. You don't even put any of your models together. How do you play with them? You just push around the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> just to spruce. Pristine in the box. Oh, so you're just a collector of the bits. <laughs> the minor losing animal savagery was the final nail in the coffin. Says Rick. Oh wow, the chorf miner. Yeah, I know what you mean, Captain Rates. They said they're not going to change the minotaur at all, and then they changed him completely to the other type of minotaur. Oh my god! It they felt lied. like a bit of a betrayal, didn't it? <laughs> if you have more time, yeah, that's sad. I always have time for my mini. Yeah, I. I mean, for a start, I can't paint, and it would distress me. I would find it humiliating and awful. I'd be but hilarious I, though. I just couldn't find the time, and at that time I'd rather spend playing a game. Or Are you talking about any games? playing a game. Um, I've been trying to get back into it this season. I'm still theoretically no, trying to warm up playing, ready for. Are you playing any games like? Ready for around? streaming again. Uh, yeah, I had a little go through. I want to get through Wasteland 3. Oh, that's amazing, that game. Uh, I've done two. I did one thousands of years ago, but I did two fairly recently. Which was yeah, Wasteland 3 is one of the most fun games I've ever completed. Yeah. Um, I had another go through Jagged Alliance. I'm playing around a little bit with um, Total Warhammer. And I want to do... A, I've done an XCOM 2 run, but I've never done an XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Isn't that the... what, the Long War? No, the War of the Chosen, there was a download where you had sort of three or four meta bosses that can show up through the run and mess with oh, you in various ways. Is that with like the Cobra Ice lady that's just OP as hell? Spoilers, thanks to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I hear that's quite good, so I might give that a go. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, I'm trying to get some work, I'm trying to concentrate on my career and raise a son who's having a few problems. Oh. Deal with my wife and sort my house out. Some bloody squirrels got into my house. Hmm? Some squirrels got into my house. Did they steal your fish? Look at that. No, they couldn't pick anything up. They didn't have any hands. But they did get into the house. <laughs> um, just up in the loft and sorting that hole out and the resultant sort of damage to the roof. Three and a half grand. Fucking hell. Yeah. Look now, I'll put the link there for the... That, that's the best army of just sprues. If you just want to use sprues, you can make a whole army. 
<laughs> That's why I laughed so heartily because uh, when Elliot Brilliant. mentioned the sleeve on the sprues, I knew there was that. I'd seen it <coughs> years ago. Okay. Sprue on, <laughs> fabulous. Necron just made out of screw. Made out of sprues, glorious. That actually looked pretty cool. I know, right? It's crazy. It's, 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 it's kind of tragic what people can do. <laughs> you know, and you're like struggling did, to was do it things. UPC and... said you played a team of forks or something? <laughs> Yes, I did once play a team of forks. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. I didn't have a problem with it. They they were Kemri. Uh, and depending on exactly how the, the tall the fork stood and how they'd bent the fork, you could tell exactly what Kemri piece it was going to be. <laughs> <coughs> There's another crazy 40k army, which was... Uh, it was like polis... Lumps of polystyrene was, was the team. It was actually incredible. They were just cubes. They were just cubes of polystyrene, like just differently painted cubes of polystyrene. It was actually like a top quality army. It was crazy. Star player of Spork. That would have been genuinely funny. Um, <laughs> no, they just yeah. They had they the turned the. the you know, the prongs? You know, they're not called that. Tines, aren't they? Tines. Mm. They, uh, there's an appreciative, oh, you know the word tines <laughs> too, Elliot. I love that little war. Oh, a shared quality word. Um, yeah, they, they bent those in different ways to show. And the ones that were two kings, obviously, were you know big and tall, and the other ones were shorter down. <coughs> <coughs> Just trying to find these uh, cues. I can't find. There was a, there was another army as well. It wasn't them. There was another one. But they just had like different <coughs> sizes of cues. <laughs> I love those cubes of sand. Mm. I just every time I look at them, I think there are no dice. <laughs> Oh yeah, he made like fl yeah. This is this is the guy. He made like flaming cubes that were like the screamers and stuff. That this guys weren't uh, this guys weren't painted as well, but um, he just like had like flaming ones and stuff of screamers. Like that looks really really cheap. Oh yeah, I've seen the blood letters before. Yeah, <laughs> that's a proper that's a proper Kalon on the blood letters. <laughs> Yeah, the golden theme and stuff's mad, isn't it? Ooh, uh, hasn't defended the sidelines at all. Now, while, while, while he's here, I, I do have a, a confession, Jim, if you don't mind, just a couple of seconds. I... Sure. <sighs> I've been pretending it's okay. I've been smiling along, laughing along, and saying, no, no, it's fine, but... Friends don't let friends hand roll dice. Kalorn, you, you've got oh, to get oh. yourself a cup, mate. you just got to. I, I've looked you in the eye and I've pretended it's okay. It's not okay. <laughs> I, I've got spare cups. I will get you a cup. I, I you know, I can give you mats. I can I can show you. I can teach you how to, to roll them. I really can. Because, yeah, friends don't let friends hand roll dice. Oh, dude. You've got a problem, and the first thing you need to do is face it, and then we can get you through it. But, you know, until you face it, there's just, there's no helping you. There's no helping you. Good cheer fine hand, though. Sorry, Jim, but I thought I had to try. You know, no problem, gotta, no problem. Gotta reach out to these people. <laughs> gotta approach them with love and just hope one day they see it. Yeah, end of all. I bring a cup and hand roll anyways. Oh my god. <laughs> this, guy, this guy did it to me the other day. Like, he fucking. He's using a cup and then, like, all of a sudden he's like, oh, I've got a hand roll now. So, what? 
I mean, if I do, if I make the hand, the GFI hand off, I just, I just mm -hmm. basically win, don't I? So that seems pretty good to me. Jingo Berry, look, you want to go messing around with towers? That's entirely your business. You know, I, I, it's 2024. <laughs> I'm a modern man. It's fine. You go. You be you. Um, we're all going to sit and laugh at you, but you know, it's fine. At least you're not hand rolling. <laughs> Mate, the geezer, I, I played against a vamp coach with uh, a dice tower <laughs> and he said every time it comes out of the tower he'd re-roll it. <laughs> and you thought you rolled a lot of dice with vamps. <laughs> when you roll dice with vamps at a dice tower, I can tell you, you can multiply that number by at least 0. 0.3 or whatever. <laughs> yeah, dice towers are the laughers of dice rolling. Everyone just sort of pities you. It's fine. <laughs> pretty hilarious. Do you remember I told you at the World Cup I placed, faced the guy that had the unluckiest dice in the world that day? He dubbed Skull on his first action and his second action in his second turn and his first, his first action in his third turn. <laughs> and he had two re-rolls, so he was completely screwed. I mean, he quad squalled, sorry, at the first two turns. Mm -hmm. um, he was rolling with a little dice tower and it was about the packet of a size of fags. It was slightly broken down one side. It was white and off colour. It was clearly old. And all the dice came out of it terrible. And I just thought, why are you doing this? <laughs> what are you doing? At least with a cup, there's a process that you're involved in. With the tower, it kind of feels like it could be the tower's fault. Yeah. I think a tower would be good. If, if, it, if it worked good, do you know what I mean? Then, then like, to me, that would be the best, right? If it always came out fully readable in, like, a small footprint... And then there's no, but I, do you know what? Because what I hate yeah. is, what I hate is the ones who cover it and then look yeah. at the board from the 30 seconds <laughs> and then reveal it like, oh my God, you've rolled the dice, just fucking show them. Think before you I think you it's roll, all right if it. once or twice a game, because you're trying to speed things up, if once or twice a game you've rolled the dice and you actually think, do I really want to? If it's once or twice a game, I'm fine with it because it means you're going quickly to try and keep the game moving. And a couple of times you go ahead of yourself. I've done that myself. If it's like two or three times a turn, then I'm kind of with you, Jim. Yeah, that's what it was when I played. But what I'm going to do in future is it doesn't matter because uh, chess clocks, isn't it? Yeah. So that, that's okay. At the end of the day, chess clocks make everything all right. Yeah, depressingly, I'm just, I've come to the conclusion that it. And since I did the last one, World One Blood Bowl, I bemoaned again my, my draw, which was a draw. But it's my fault it was a draw. Most of the comments I've had back have been, I can't believe a player as experienced as you doesn't use a chess clock. Why are you embarrassed about it? Just use a chess clock. Mm. And it's it's that English niceness. I don't want to be the dick that pulls out the chess clock. Mm. But that's the culture's fault. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with pulling out a chess clock. I'm going to get a proper one from Amazon. <laughs> just, just like, no, no, you know, no, I just not. Oh, just same here. I don't want to use. I mean, I've got two yeah. on my phone. I just don't like using them. Because mm. they suck all the power out of my phone. I want it for other things. Yeah, let's get a chess clock. I've got to do a two, pe two people have asked me to play on a chess clock, and I've agreed both times. And they've run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I said to him that we could just carry on playing. So, yeah. yeah, I know, Kalon, and yet... I, I, like you, want to be a smiling, happy, guileless man that everyone thinks of as, <laughs> as open-hearted and, and just nice. Without the ability to wow. fool others or lie. But I've seen the dark of humanity, and I've seen that some people do cheat, even in something as ridiculous as Blood Bowl. Um, that's just a, a sad fact. Like, Kind, sweet-hearted, innocent-eyed friend. <laughs> I just can't get free far, can I? Oh, I can't believe I've got a fucking dodge. Mm. I'm the worst. My blood seeker cast three people in one game so he gets to level up. Let's go. Jesus. What? Did you start with him? Blood seeker, yeah. what warrior? Oh, sorry. I was blood spawn. No, oh, fuck the blood spawn. Fuck. I decided, because blood spawns are always so underwhelming because they're so expensive. I decided when I went to no numbers thing, I wanted to just 
get corn done so I never have to catch them again. I enjoyed them so much. Mm. So I decided instead of a blood spawn, I'd upgrade to Skylar Anger Flim. Mm. Um, and he was shit. <laughs> Which I mean, is he's a just real a blood spawn, isn't he? Well, he's a blood spawn, but he's only 40k more, for which you get plus one AV, uh, which is pretty good all by itself. Um, you get disturbing presence and prehensile tail. So I figure that's not bad for 40k. But no, he really didn't perform for me. <clears throat> uh, Kalon, can I ask you a question? Uh, with resin. Like the four drilled resin. Do I need to use super glue rather than plastic glue? Yes, okay. Right, Mate, this is. But don't smoke a cigarette at the same time, Demi. No, because you don't want any of this crap in there. Yeah, you don't want it anywhere near that. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, he caught it. <laughs> <laughs> Completely reasonable. <laughs> Casual one and eight. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. I thought, is this really worth it? A thirty percent chance to fall over Wait. for a one in eight chance to catch it. And is this then... the third OWA game in a row? It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the actual fuck. Are they all against the same guy practicing his? Uh, no, 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 no. Two different, two <laughs> different old world alliances. <laughs> it's one of the things that went slightly unreported. I might have to do a third one, world one, blah blah blah, blah about the Euros. The, up at the um, the scary end of the stats, where there's not enough to really be statistically viable, were of course Old World Alliance and the OP of them all, Knobs. Yeah. Yep. Um, both did really, really well, and I I do think they were slightly overlooked. We said when we looked at who was getting what that they were attempting to. Take. I was surprised I didn't see a few more. I mean, they had Including great the person, packs. Yeah, the really personal people packs. that took those knew exactly what to do with them as well, so we didn't get a lot of variance by crap people taking them. Hmm. I mean, but, Elliot and I were similar, right, for the you know the Season 2 finals. We both looked at, and uh, Artemis as well, right, we all looked at like all the lines and knobs for them because mm -hmm. like the packages were incredible. It's the same kind of thing, right, because ultimately we all, we all decided... Well, actually, knobs and uh, or were a shit, so he didn't do them. But that's the I problem. <laughs> I guess if you played a lot of knobs or a lot of Oa, then that's the sort of thing you are going to want to take them, right? Because it is the perfect package for them. And, and you know, if you've got loads of experience and are comfortable with them, and you don't think they're shit, then I guess you would take them. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's replacing, it's dealing with their shitness by being super experienced with them. Yeah, yeah. I think that might be a big part of it. Like I said, there wasn't a lot of people. I didn't feel there were casual players taking them because of the. You know, they were so attractive that everyone was thinking, hang on, I've got to try this. Mm. I think they were attractive enough that a few people that were really good with them thought, yeah, that's good enough. Mm. <laughs> I thought they looked incredible. But you always like the look of knobs, don't you? I do, Jimmy? yeah, I do. I think I think they're workable, like in normal repool sets, but the, in the actual Europe rule set, they were actually decent. I'm going to bed. Good yeah, night, Elliot. Night, Elliot. Now you see what he's done here. That's a huge mistake, of course. Dub scold. Well, that wasn't his best plan. <laughs> but no, he's left a simple two plus dodge out, hasn't he? Yes. Put all those players around the board and yet position them badly. Yes. I mean, you always leave something, but that's just too big a thing. Yeah. Two, 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 you're home. Nice. 
Nice. Nice, sir. Really nice. Um, oh, in fact, you don't even need to now. Yeah, I'm tempted to just go back. <laughs> you don't need to. to You're so slow. If the witch wrestles down there, wrestle, Peach. Just go with the other side. Yeah, true, true. Because it's tackle. The problem is this is tackle, so it's quite a lot of twos, right? It's one, and then two, and then three, four. So I didn't really want to just do that. Um, so. so so don't. Yeah, no, like I, I said, take the wrestle piece out and do your single two plus and just run away. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. And that way if there's a fail, it's miles away from them on one of the rushes. Remember, it's not just about if you fail, it's where you fail, isn't it, mate? Yep. Particularly with elves, that's quite a lot of turns end with a fail, so it's choosing where that fail should be can be really key. Hmm. Oh, this is sexy. We get the nice knockdown of the fast piece into the stun, and we get to run away. We're not worried about the Dawson tree. They're not coming anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go back, because then there's just always a danger of going wrong. I would always stay forwards, you know, me in space. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure the 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two to score is necessarily needed here. Two plus and run looks the money. Because even if they stop you, what are they going to do? Your elves are going to get there before they do. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, he can. He, I've got a double G if I to avoid getting hit by him. I think it's worth it, isn't it? <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'll go there and I'm in range. Yep. That's exactly where I'd be going. You were very wise. One of the first one was a one. Four. They don't even have tackle to this. I could go there. See, to me, this is much more your elf play, Jim. It's, I mean, hitting things is, is nice. But much more importantly is getting your screens and your turn ordering with elves. Oh, because yeah, no matter what like... build you go with, you're never long on elves, so you really wow. can't afford to lose them. No, but I mean, punching is is one of the prime ways to not lose them, isn't it? <laughs> like, punching well, yes is and, really, really good. Yes really and no, good. it is really good, but also it does leave them in places where they can get punched back or put into tough positions to dodge out of. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking margins here. You know I love it to hit, but mm. I just find with elves, I, I run away much more than I would normally do with most other races. Oh. Well, you are based, Jim. Have you uh, considered conceding? No. No. Uh, Ooh, we almost got there with the rest of except he didn't because it was bloody miles <laughs> and yeah. loads of dice yeah. of course it being naff you don't need to worry about team preservation doesn't matter if they all die does it no no and to some degree this you know you've learned all you can from this Got this thought, haven't I? This is, uh, yeah. This is very good player here. <laughs> tree into tree, just for Kalon. The third one gets him. <laughs> hey! <laughs> GG. Well is this 3 0? Oh my god. Mm. I got blitzed, didn't I? I got like I got the turnover score and then uh banged it in in two and then got a blitz into one in it into double GFI into catching the blitz. So I I got a, a fair amount of luck. It's 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 fair to say that I got a fair amount of luck, yep. Yep. Well, let's see that makes my heart go sad, Jim. Because as the legendary gangster said to me, if you want to win tourneys, you're going to have to play elves. Because it's that ability to use the luck, isn't it? Mm. 
If yes, dwarves get lucky, they've got to look at the luck and think, now, is there anything I can actually do with this luck? Oh no, this luck is seven squares away, then it's pointless, it wasn't luck. Yes. Yeah, that's the big thing for me, is like, Dark Elves. Like, you've always got the chance to, like, play your way out of trouble as well, haven't you? Yep. Whereas, again, with dwarves and stuff, you just don't. Like, even undead, like, you know, it's just basic stuff, isn't it? Punching things, hoping for the best. Oh, I've held on and got the, you know, winning touchdown with three Dark Elves on the pitch. We all have. Yeah. Particularly if they're three of your Blodge Blitzers, for example. You know, there's a good chance you can just ride a couple of hits out and stay away. Yep. With a 3 2, for which you've got an inbuilt reroll. Yep. Yeah, so I think it's worth playing them more and getting more used to them at this level and stuff. It's, it's not exactly the same as playing ladder, is it? No. But I mean, that's where I built my, you know, four rerolls and Apo Dark Elf build was for that agency, for that ability, not just to respond to luck, but to force it to happen. Yeah. You'd be amazed what a wrestle witch with a bloody mind and three rerolls can get done in some terms. Yeah, yeah. So, I just think, I mean, for the NAF C, that was why I liked that. If I was going to a team tournament, I might go for a more of a a conservative dark elf build with just three rerolls and. Uh, you know, a little more solidity on the roster because mm. there's so many good builds yeah that's the thing isn't it there's, I mean there's four there and there's, there's more on top of them really like minor yeah. things I, I quite liked going for man kisses one but with a apple rather than a reserve and then going for the uh, the team mascot that's what I would have gone with at a uh, Euro Bowl I would have gone for the team mascot build yeah, I mean, as we discussed, there's, there's, I don't think there's better things to do with 30k, really. But it's still a bit shit. It's still pricing your reroll at 90k. Oh yeah, like I, I, I don't think it would be good. <laughs> uh, but uh, better than it's just literally better than nothing is where, where I view it. You know, I mean, he, he yeah. basically got yeah, nothing, it... right? He got an assistant coach and he got a reserve instead of an apple, so he basically got nothing for his 30k. Yeah, I. Hmm. The thing with the reserve is it does mean you can selectively you could foul as well. Yes, yeah, I found. So when I've had a twelve yeah. elf, that was something that I found I could do. Yeah. Um, so it's not just about the reserve in case something gets smashed up, because obviously then you're better off with an apple because you want to keep your witches and your blodgers on the pitch, right? Yeah, yeah, I did find it frustrating when I was playing wood elves and couldn't foul the dancers. <laughs> And like same with uh, Skaven as well, right? Like you want to foul the you want to foul the uh, gutters sometime, don't you? Strip wrestle gutter, yeah. you want to foul that asshole. You want to foul where? You want to <laughs> foul? We do. You want to foul strip dancers and strip gutters, really? They're the only two, and a, and a mummy as well, right? Like a big gang foul on a mummy is a really good foul to make. So there are like three good fouls to make, basically. Yeah. And the other nice thing about Delves is you can go very aggressive. You can play like pro elves with slightly better armor. Mm. You can go really up in their face. Particularly they have a lot of tackle, you can just get your blodgers up in their face, pull their cage apart, go after their ball with your two wrestle witches. Which for some reason you got wrong, Jim, but you'll know. <laughs> um, well, K Fog likes one block one wrestle. And uh, I, know. I think he's pretty good. He is. Yeah. But me and Jay Leave are both pretty good too, and we prefer two wrestles, so Wow. On a scale of one to pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, I would I... say K Fog's probably better than me. Um, there are only two English players ranked higher than me with Dark Elves currently, and they are K-Fogged and PW, so <laughs> their opinions are certainly worth listening to. But I would suggest with Dark Elves, so I'm right. Oh, yeah. But it's K-Fog, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'll never not do something that K-Fog thinks is the best. Well, I mean, uh, he has a certain style. Remember, I've always described him as someone that plays like... Um, I never really had a good analogy for it until the Hong Kong latest riots, which, because of the Chinese surveillance, they described that they they, they riot like they they use the force. They are like water. So they just arrive, do it, disappear. There's no leadership. There's no centralization, and that's often how K folk plays. So he'll assume big guys, but just lots of fast moving pieces that are constantly in movement all across the field. His zones of control are constantly changing. 
but he's always got most of the field tied up and sewn up. And he just lives in a state of sort of fluxy chaos and movement, which doesn't suit everybody as a coach. I mean, that said, he's a damn fine blood ball player, of course. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty pretty good at the old blood balls. He's he's in my top five players that I've ever known or watched play blood ball. So yeah, he's in it shows my, you how good I think he is. He's in my he's in top, top one, one isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, to me, that's still Purple Goo, who I think is better. But... Yeah, Purple Goo's really, really, really good. Yeah. I mean, that said, if I wanted to pick someone to win a game with Wood Elves, I'd pick Core. Mm. But if I wanted to pick someone to win a game of Blood Bowl with Race Unknown, it would be Purple Cook. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the th the problem the problem that you've got is with Purple Goo is like lack of sample size, right? I guess I could watch like you know loads of replays on Fumble, but like I've just yeah. seen more of KFL, haven't I? And like I've only played. Purple Goo a handful of times, like I think twice on tabletop and once on fumble. So yeah. all the time, Benny Bartas. I've and played it's, people. It's razor thin, by the way. By the way, if anyone's yeah. play, placing either one of the others, it's yeah. razor thin. Like already, like once you get like good, again, like we we're talking the other day, like the top five hundred, there's very little, and it's probably going to be yeah. over the luckiest wins anyway, unless someone makes. And we're right definitely in the up. area where a subjective opinion. Maybe the difference between why I think of one slightly ahead of the other and you the other way around. It might not be anything rational at all. Well, no, it, is, it isn't really, because all you've got is your own opinion. Like, at the end of yeah. the day, like, that's all any of us have got. So if you think that doing something is good and, 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 and you know, Purple Goo does it more than K-Fog, then you'll think he's better. Yes. If I think something, doing something's good, then I'll think it's better if he does it. And, so, and you know, like, that's it. Like, say, for example, I mean, we're Chunter players. We are also talking about two of the most, you know, rewarded, decorated and award winning coaches there's ever been. So they've also got you know, they've got danglable things to show how good they are as well. Oh, yeah. oh he almost got away with it, look. Yeah. When the game's all done, I don't mind if they get away with something like that. <laughs> get but away it's to win the game. I mean oh TTM is just such an arse ache, isn't it? Yeah. Oh don't. Has anyone <laughs> ever surprised me at BB? Yeah, all the time. Um, there was a 13 year old I played the other day who I knew was good but my goodness did he surprise me when I played him just how good he was how quick really yeah the speed his mind moved up yeah he's good um, Dimmy's surprised me every time I've played him he's been notably not shit <laughs> um, kicked your ass didn't he in fact I have and I won't name them but I have played a couple of people with you know huge reputations and whether it's just the day or the game, I've come away thinking, you know what, I wasn't impressed. Oh, I'm literally one of the people everyone told me was the very best in Britain. I played him and I was like, that was kind of easy. Maybe they're just having an off day, maybe they weren't concentrating, maybe they just had bad dice. Who knows? It's really small sample sizes. So yeah, you get surprised all the time. Um... Noobs, yeah, I mean, it's more, to be honest, if I turn up at a tournament and I'm sat opposite someone and they go, it's my first tournament, I've played six games. Has anyone like that ever surprised me how good they are? Yes. You know, they've clearly done their homework or whatever, but, I mean, not, not really. If they've played six games, their odds of, outside of extraordinary dice doing well, are pretty low. Did you play? Oh no, you didn't. Did you play Kalon at uh, Home Nations? Did I did play Kalon at the Home Nations. He the, stole a draw game? off me. My only draw of the okay. weekend. Stole a draw off me. You played. I was so. I mean, literally, I was feeling queasy from watching his greasy little hands touch all the dice and then <laughs> just plop them out, and they would just not move at all. They'd just land, move without. Just literally as a square moving downwards in space without any movement side to side <laughs> and would then land obviously showing a six on the top <laughs> oh 
thank you, Magic Carpet. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to pay me union rates. Yeah, small sample sizes are the only real. Like it's true, right? Because that's it. Like it's it's kind of crazy because you know it, there's no there's no objective way to run people, is there? Like there just isn't. There just isn't. There's there's like fumble like, CR. There's uh, there's blood ball three SR. There's like win rate on blood ball two. There's uh, there's like NAF rankings, and it's all you know essentially absolute bullshit. All of them. Um, no, they're not. <laughs> They are. And you shouldn't say so. And I'll never let people say so without challenging. They are essentially they have, bullshit. They are limited in what they tell you. What each yes. one demonstrates mm. is that coach's success of building a ranking under that system. Yes, no exactly. More, no yes. less. Exactly. Which is basically so they, bullshit. They don't mean nothing, but they no, also are yes. a long way from definitive in any sense. But if someone has a good rating at any of those, the odds are they're not a fool at Blood Bowl. If they have a very low rating at any of those, they're probably not great at Blood Bowl. But these are still only probabilities. And yet they are probabilities. Yeah. So yes, unlike most of our binary world, the truth is they're not wonderful, but they're not shit. They're somewhere in the middle. Yes. I'm There's your sure. classic elf seed. That's still doable, even with nerfed passing. Isn't it lovely? Yep. It's a good win, Jim. Oh, I mean, all in good order, mate. It's, uh, you might be slightly overhitting for my toast, but only slightly. Mm, I like overhitting. <laughs> Just remember, against someone really top quality, they will start removing elves by fouling, because they'll instantly spot that you're only at 11. Yes. But, so um, you really need to keep them safe sometimes. The problem is that I... Uh, my tip. This, uh, you know, even if you've got 12, it's still like, you're just worse off, right? Because they randomly cast a blitzer and that, you know, like, that's just way worse than if they, uh, if you can apple a blitzer, isn't it? Like, you lose quality, so it's, it's tough. It's really tough between uh, apple and reserve, I think. Like, you can apple a KO, right, and keep it on, like, that's really good. Yes. It's not necessarily less durable having 11, like having, yeah. Thank you. Again, what are you building for? What are you worried about? I would suggest in a team-based competition, it's probably better to have the reserve. Yes, yeah. So you've got the numbers, it's for solidity, it's for definitely getting your draw. I'd suggest at the NAFC, I'm not interested in the reserve. I want 11, I want all of my danger on the pitch. Well, yes, like this as well, right? This, on this one with the three re-rolls, and as you say, with the four re-rolls, that's much better for Swiss when you have to push for the win. So, yeah, I agree yeah. I agree in that regard, 100%, yeah. I'd probably, I'll probably go like the man kids build, honestly, for this, because with this, you, the fact that it's like two or three as well, like the third yep. one's overtime, so there's not a yeah. lot between them. So, yeah, maybe the man kids build that gets you the 12th man and gets you six blodges is just a bit more durable for like grinding yeah. out the overtime. I mean, just like with, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily do this, but it's a thought. Like if I knew that undead were going to face a lot of overtimes, I might think again about skilling the mummies because there's going to be three drives where they might see a lot of action. Um, so yes, I mean, the answer is there's lots of viable builds of Stark Elves at the sort of standard NAF tiering and sizes. I would suggest choose between them based on your play style and on exactly what you're trying to get done. As I said, is it all about the wins? Is it about reliability? Is it about not losing? And then that might help you decide which one is the best for you in that circumstance. Yes, I, I like not losing. <laughs> So when there were lots of snotlings around, assassins made a lot more sense, of course, because you were facing a lot more little dodgy things that could be stabbed very effectively. Mm. Maybe they're slightly less indicated now that, you know, Underworld are not going to be seen in tournaments much. Yeah. So things do change. But yeah, I going for six wins and no compromises. Give me four rerolls and two wrestle witches because I've yeah. got I've got to be able to make things happen no matter what happens on the dice. Yeah, I like I like that. I actually do. I agree with you on that. I actually do like that for the for the having to win. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, some of these yeah, some of these differences are about you know what exactly are you equipping them to do. Mm. Anyway, there you go. Um, right, now. that's it for me for a bit. Um, if you are playing on, I don't know, but I'm going to disappear and have a cigarette and then consider maybe a game of Blood Bowl before bed. Four. Well, good night, PC. Thanks very much. for. Uh... I've got a couple of races doing all right this season, which is... Mm -hmm. I still... Uh, I 
tried two back to back and I was really struggling in the second one. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I've done three. That's crazy. That's absolutely that's, crazy that I've done three. I think having that see that's the other thing is perhaps streaming will help. Having people to chat to, just having something to distract you from that. <laughs> it's still so glaring and just <laughs> such visual hard work, isn't it? You know? It really is, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to play multiple uh, games. It's hard just looking at the pitch too much. It's, yeah. Well, well done, Jim, and and nice play with the Delves. It's really coming on. Thanks. And I, I, I think between the builds, it's not about finding which one's better. It's about finding which one's better for you. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, I'm so uncareful with my witches that two wrestle ones make sense to me. But if you're really doing a lot of hitting, then obviously a block one makes more sense for you. So it's, I think there some of it's down to choice and the specific environment. There you go. All right, matey. No, no. Thank you. Good night. Also, thanks to Dimmy, too, who's been a bit quieter, but, you know, he's still here. Thanks, Dimmy. I, I'm wrestling with a four-year-old mini. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. And thank you very much to Elliot, who was here. Uh, you know, he's, he's actually... He's, I am here. <laughs> but he's not. He's not. He's not. He's actually... He was here. But now he's gone. But thank you, Elliot. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic. <laughs>